All right. Welcome back to One Crack News. And people say, I love it when you talk business. I know all that other stuff is cool to talk about, is interesting, and grabs all the headlines. But this is the stuff that's not people are going to skip over and not going to pay any attention to. Remember, I never got a chance to finish telling you guys when we were discussing about ideas and values. We never really got a chance to finish. So I want to rectify that today and go ahead and finish a couple of things with you guys. Because I didn't really, I don't think you grasped emotional energy. And how important that is in business. See, winning companies and um, structural organizations and all that stuff, they do their best work, you know, trying to, you know, be highly competitive in the world. You know, they work in faster with great energy. So you see that enthusiasm. You know, you see Balkman. Want that Larry O.B., baby. The Larry O.B. And you see that enthusiasm he has. And it's like, dude, you got billions of dollars. Why are you, how are you still this hungry and ambitious for things? That's what keeps him going. Other than that, then he's gone. He's done. So emotional energy is important. Ideals and values unify people and allow them to act independently, but still in, in a, like, support of the common goal, the ideals and values themselves are just strong motivators. So hopefully that, you know, that resonates with you guys. You see, winning leaders not only encourage people to have good ideas, and the strong values, but you know, you need to take like deliberate action to generate energy, you know, to be able to, to channel it productively, you know, and that's what it's about. You know, build strong relationships with associates and customers and vendors, communities, you need that, especially in business. You know, they always say respect for all people. Eh, you can ignore a few. Because <laughs> not all have your uh, best interests in hands. Now, who all, re who all knows what Yum is? Yum Brands. How many of you guys know what Yum is? Yum Brands. Okay. <laughs> well, let's get to it. Young Brands, uh, David Novak, I think, uh, is the guy who owns the Young Brands. And most of you don't know who David Novak is or probably Young Brands. Anyway, Novak is the CEO of Young Brands. Now, if I say Pizza Hut, Taco Bell, KFC, Long John Silvers, the a and Root Beers. You're going to go, oh, I know all of them. All of them are under one umbrella called Yum. How many times have you went to a Taco Bell and they had a KFC attached to it? How many times have you went to a KFC and they had a Pizza Hut attached to it? How many times have you seen a Pizza Hut? and all these different companies. These are called the Yum Brands. Most of them are hourly workers. And all these people in this company building energy in a workplace. You know? Well, Novak and his colleagues and senior managers and all of these things find that it's essential to have this energy with all these fast food employment. Fast food is a place that needs energy. Can't have slow people working there. So you got to be just as enthusiastic as you want them to be. If you understand that. Because they know, like I know, enthusiasm spreads. 
You've seen it in basketball. You've seen it in football. And if enthusiasm spreads, it is very critical to increasing the enjoyment of your customer's experience. If you're in any job that deals with that in particular, dealing with the public, like working at Walgreens, Walmart, or whatever, you're dealing with the public, your enthusiasm could make the other person just as happy. And me, I am a people person. I don't mind spending time talking to people and what we call building energy. You're building energy in a workplace, and that's the way you move up. They love that. And as a business owner, you want to make sure you push that. If you come in in a mopey attitude, it spreads. So these are very teachable points of view for you to understand. Emotional energy. That's what you want. You know, being playful and things like that, depending on what job you have, it's very, you know, it's very influential. But Novak is somebody who definitely uses this to his example. You know, smiley face can go a long way. And that's why that corporation has been flourishing for all these years. Now, you look at different energies in people. Most people we would assume has positive energy grids. But some people have negative ones because negativity is spread throughout the day. We watch the news, negative. Weather, negative <laughs> everything is negative 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 so most people have positive energy it's just submerged down with all the negative that's piling on top of it and most people work eagerly and productively when conditions are met leaders don't always have to be actively creative in all the conditions and the things that happen but like if you have like external events um, you can have things with a sense of urgency that come out of nowhere, you know, and, you know, it's like a force of nature and conditions, you know, leaders generate them some, themselves sometimes. They don't really need a motivation. <laughs> leaders seem to make sure that, <laughs> like, they exist, all right? See, a leader, therefore, must have a basic teachable point of view on each of anything that they do a sense of urgency that is clear to everybody in the organization you know this is created by conveying a message that certain things have to happen if the organization is going to succeed have you ever heard that you know you're you ever been in a success meeting or even a meeting at your company job they saying these things have to happen in order for us to succeed and if these things don't happen the organization is in serious trouble. You know me, I like to give examples. You know Home Depot? All right. Home Depot, you know, they had a need for great customer service. The idea of great customer service, that's what everybody wants. That's a part of the Home Depot business model is that we want to have people that, that knows what they're talking about, explain to every associate, it is explained without, to an explicit with corporate value, and it is fostered at all levels of the company. But much of the sense of the urgency and the energy behind it, it comes from actions, from senior leadership. See, Marcus and Blank, who basically deliver the products to Home Depot, they would go out in the parking lots and, you know, ask the customers, leaving empty-handed why they hadn't bought anything and if their reply was that the store didn't have what the customer wanted they wanted to find that item out even if they had to buy it from a competitor and get it to them that day they would give refunds on items that home depot didn't even sell do you understand what i'm saying to you 
That's the repetition of an injunction that says whatever it takes to make the customer happy and buy from us. Because once you have a super satisfied customer, they become your best selling point. They're going to tell that story to every single human being that walks the planet. Wait, Home Depot, I went in there and looked for it. They didn't have it. You know what they did? They went out and bought the part and gave it to me. That's what Home Depot did for me. So when you have a whatever it take approach to please the customer combined with going to lifts to prove that you personally went there to support it and did more than anyone else to drive home to everyone that the supreme importance was the urgency of this goal. Because the rewards is going to be even greater because now you have a selling marketing piece out there for you in the world. Hopefully that clears everything up. <laughs> so I, I love talking business with you guys. It, it's really uh, funny because I think about companies and all the things that I've learned coming up and things that the companies did that I that sticks with me. That's something that happened that stuck with me. It's a lot of others, but we'll be here all night. <laughs> and I, I really don't have the time. We could talk about the software's airlines, you know, building a low budget uh, cost carrying that made travel air available to people who might not otherwise been able to afford to fly. And they made flying fun at the time. They made fun work. <laughs> and employees have been beginning to appreciate it. And that's where, you know, things took a turn. So it all comes from emotional energy. Southwest came in. They weren't a giant. They were a small company. They didn't even go a lot of places. They just ex started expanding. They used old planes. That it was like, why was nobody using these planes? No more. These planes were great. They had no crashes. Southwest Airlines was the best place to travel, and they made it affordable. Now, look at what Southwest is now. <laughs> People be like, man, I can't afford to fly Southwest. Damn. <laughs> they gave you, they say, look, we, you're not going to get you this. You're not going to have that. You're not going to have this. Now, if you still want to fly and go to A to B, we can get you there. They'd be like, yes, that's all I want to do is get there. All right, let's go. <laughs> now they got internet on the planes. So you see things step up, you know. Things step up. But I don't want to keep you guys all day. I want to keep this rather short. Uh, let me get out of here. <laughs>